So right now we are looking at a reaction that by its name it looks very similar to the one in one of the previous videos. We looked at something called the aldol reaction. Now we're looking at something called the aldol condensation. It turns out because the name is similar, the reactions are also very similar too. This is a condensation because we spit out a little molecule like water at the end. Um, and really, this whole reaction, all it is, is an aldol reaction with one extra step. All right. Uh, you can have the aldol reaction between two different aldehydes, two different ketones, or one each of the same thing. In this case, I wanted to look at a reaction between this guy, which is benzaldehyde, and then this guy, which is uh, oh boy, which is acetophenone. One's an aldehyde, one's a ketone. You remember we said in the aldol reaction video. This reaction equally applies to aldehydes and ketones both. Uh, the thing I want you guys to take a look at is the OH- minus here, which does exactly the same job it, in the aldo, it did in the aldol reaction video. Um, it does the same thing here. It attacks an acidic alpha hydrogen, forms an enolate, which then goes and reacts with another molecule of carbonyl. The difference here is we have two different carbonyls. So the question might be then, well, how do I know which carbonyl reacts with the OH minus? Because if I don't, couldn't I get a whole bloody host of different products? Well, the answer in this case is yes. But if you're careful enough and you pick two molecules, and like I said, you are careful about it, you will just get one product. Now, let's see if we can figure out what is going to happen between the OH minus and these two molecules. Can you guys see which one has the, the alpha hydrogens that are going to be acidic enough to react with it? Well, take a look at this one. How many alpha hydrogens do we have? Well, there's the alpha carbon. That's not an alpha hydrogen. There's the alpha carbon. How many hydrogens are on that carbon? Well, the answer, of course, is zero. This aldehyde has been chosen specifically because it has no alpha hydrogens. Therefore, it can't react via an alpha substitution. This one, on the other hand, is exactly the same, except there's a methyl group here. So this is where the alpha hydrogens are. All right. So this is going to react with this guy, and it's going to produce an intermediate. Now, let's see if we can start that off then. Okay. So what we have is our acetophenone. Let's draw this out. Here we go. And here is our hydrogen. And also here is our OH minus. There it is. So the two will react in exactly the same way they have before. There's no surprises here, no, no differences. This is also an equilibrium, all right? Because it's still, it's essentially the same thing as before. Now, in order to speed things up a little, and kind of because I'm lazy too, I'm going to make a shorthand of the ring as just a final group. All right. The final group's not involved in the mechanism, so it's just there. Make my life easier. So what we have here is our enolate. And then, you know what, let me draw that again. That's, that's kind of a mess, isn't it? Please accept my apologies for that. That was kind of a mess. Let me try that again. pH. Here is our O minus, that is better. And here is our double bond. All right. So to that, we are then going to react this benzaldehyde. Now, we don't need to add the benzaldehyde in separately. We can just have it added in right at the start. Remember, we said it doesn't react. Uh, oh crap, I said I was going to do shorthand of that. You remember we said the benzaldehyde, because it has no alpha hydrogens, it can't react. Almost did it again. All right, so here we go. Here is our benzaldehyde. So, same thing as before. O minus goes on down, kicks out the carbons of the electrons from the pi bond, and goes up onto that O minus, uh, onto the carbonyl oxygen forming O minus. 
Now let's try and draw this out. pH. There is my carbonyl group that I've reformed. All right, let's 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 do some numbering again just to check. One, two, and I'm going to say this is carbon three. So I've formed a bond between carbon one, oh, not between carbon one, sorry, between carbon two and three. So what do I have coming off carbon three? Well, I've got my O minus. I've got my phenyl group. And I've also got my hydrogen. You don't really need to show the hydrogen at this point, but it's perfectly fine if you do. Here is our water that we just generated. All right. The O minus goes and grabs it. So I'm hoping you guys can see I'm doing all I'm doing right now is showing the mechanism for the aldol reaction. This is all I'm showing. Nothing different at all. So let me just draw this out. And if you remember from what we said before, oh, I have my count here again. She just rubbed a bottom in my face. Yes, hello. Thank you for rubbing your bottom in my face. So, here is our uh, beta hydroxy ketone in this case. Now, you're probably wondering, well, okay, uh, if this is the product, what's the difference between that and uh, what we're about to form? Because you said over on this um, slide that this happened. So somewhere after, somehow we have to go from this to, if I just draw out the representation of what we had over on the other slide, we're somehow going to go to this. So let me just draw this out. Essentially this. Now, notice uh, where this double bond is. The double bond is between the two carbons of particular importance here, the alpha and the beta carbons. That's why this is known as an alpha-beta unsaturated because of the double bond carbonyl. Alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl. We say carbonyl because we could talk about an aldehyde or a ketone here. It's, it's just a catch-all term to talk about both functional groups. So somehow we have to go from here to here and generate some water in the process. So hmm, how might we do that? Well, let's see what we can do. And also bear in mind, we are going to be regenerating our OH minus catalyst so the reaction can just start all over again. Well, to give you guys a clue, I'm going to draw on some particularly important hydrogens here. What's so special about this hydrogen? Come on, what's so special about it? Well, of course, it's the alpha hydrogen. Now, you guys are probably noticing that the two groups that are going to have to leave are going to have to be the hydrogen and the OH here to form water. Now, why is it? What's so special about forming a double bond here? Because in most cases, this, this doesn't happen, but it does here. In order to see that better, let's let's go back here. What can you say about this double bond in relation to the benzene rings and the carbonyl group? There is an awful lot of something, given the fact we have lots of double bonds here. Where it begins with C and ends in conjugation. There's a lot of conjugation here. Double single, double single, um, double single. Uh, let's see, double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single, double. Uh, the, this is conjugated pretty much all the way through, which means it's super, super, super stable. So whenever you have a species like that, where you can essentially spontaneously form an extremely conjugated system, well, that's what you'll do. All right. The book actually talks about adding in OH- minus to an aldol reaction product to make this happen. Well, if you're doing an aldol reaction, you have OH- minus there anyway. And so if you have an aldol reaction product that will, that will undergo condensation to an aldol condensation product, well then it will. In fact, we'll take advantage of this in lab 
one of the products we're going to form, or the main product we're going to form in our aldol reaction experiment, is going to be the alpha, beta, unsaturated product. But can we talk about the mechanism here? Well, I'm hoping it's not too much of a stretch. Here's our OH minus. And hopefully you guys can see it's going to grab that, that acidic alpha hydrogen, kick those electrons up onto there. Now, usually we don't see OH minus as a good leaving group, but in this case, there's lots of OH minus around, which makes this easier to come off, and we're going to regenerate it in the reaction anyway. So what we've done is we've formed the bond between the alpha and beta carbons, and we formed the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. And that is essentially the aldol condensation. It's really just a dehydration or a condensation of an alpha of an aldol reaction product. Now, on a quiz or on an exam, just to keep things simple, I would specify, show the aldol reaction or aldol condensation product so you know which one you're looking for. Um, but basically, that's it. You can see these two mechanisms are essentially exactly the same for just one extra step in the aldol condensation. All right?